In this video, it's finally time to have our first race weekend of the year. We made some brilliant overtakes and showed some big balls, but also everything was thrown at us. Are we able to get a good position for the championship? Well, watch this video and find out. Hey guys, what's up, Red Actions here, and welcome back to this brand new video. And today, finally, after so many months, race weekend. Yeah, time for the first round of the Dutch T4 series. Really looking forward to it. I've been testing and training a lot over the last few weeks. I will not be driving today. I will just be putting my kart in a tent and making it ready because there's still quite a lot of work I need to do on it. And also I need to drive all the way there, which with this traffic is going to be about three hours, I'm afraid. So um, yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's hit the road. Um, well, people, we have arrived. Um, it is raining, uh, well, not hard, but like these small droplets and there's a lot of them. And uh, that's basically the uh, forecast for the entire weekend. So. We'll probably have a full weekend of weather like this. It should be a nice challenge because I have only driven Tillotson in the wet uh, once uh, a year ago now. First I'm going to have some food I think and go to the toilet because I've been in the car for way too long. Nothing like a fresh broodje frikandel special. Basically a uh, deep fried sausage with uh, like ketchup with spices in it, mayonnaise and some onions. It might sound horrible to someone who's not Dutch but trust me it's really good with some uh, fresh food in the belly, let's uh, build up the cart. Now as you guys know, last year we were racing with Team Pitparts.nl uh, and uh, we're doing the same again this year. Here we are, hello, hello. hello. Well, um, that's the situation. I have a lot of work to do, so let's not waste any time. Let's get going. Boom, this thing is done. I'm kind of still torn on what to do with setup because it's going to be dry tomorrow according to the forecast. So um, yeah, I'm kind of hesitant to put a wet setup on there. Um, so I'll, I'll just wait and see what happens. Also, no engine yet. My uh, uh, testing engine is uh, well still with the team, so uh, that will only be here tomorrow. Luckily, mounting an engine on a Tillotson isn't that, that hard, so that will be done in no time. So yeah, let's uh, clean things up and uh, have another look around the paddock. I really know what to do now, actually. Right, having a small look at the track now, and um, I think it's fair to say that the challenge of the competition this year is going to be a lot bigger than last year. And last year I really only had one rival, so it will be a challenge to see if we can get a good result this time. Of course we're going for that W, but can't say for sure yet. I certainly have to drive better than last year, that's for sure. Alright, did some more work. I think I can't do anything more. Let's go uh, to our hotel. All right, guys, we have arrived at the hotel. It's actually just my girlfriend's house, but I thought it was funny to say hotel. Everything is ready to go tomorrow. Uh, we will have our engine. The uh, second van of the team will arrive, which will have my engine so we can put it on. I hope it's better because last time, uh, well, you saw, wasn't that good. Anyways, I'm going to catch some sleep now. See you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. Alright guys, good morning! Welcome to a uh, monsoon on Pottendijk Emmen. It is raining very hard. That's also why I uh, haven't really uh, talked with you guys yet, because, uh, well, I had some uh, work to do with this thing. Luckily it's all ready now, so we can go out like, in about an hour, I think. But um, yeah, let me show you what the weather is like. Um, yeah, it is drenched AF, so uh, nice wet day today. Anyway, I will get myself ready now. This thing is already ready, so let's go. Welcome back once again to Circuit Pottendijk Emmen, this time for our first race of the year. We are competing in the Dutch Tillotson T4 series and we are competing to become Dutch champion as well as to win that ticket to the 2024 Nations Cup. If we want to start winning, we need to be quick around this track. I've never driven this track in the wet before, so let's explore a lap on new wet tires. A lap of Pottendijk starts with a very long straight on which we reach speeds of over 100 kph. Turn 1 goes on forever and it's important to make an ultra late apex and hit the curb on both the left and the following right hander. We take even more curbs throughout the next corners to help rotate the cart in these super slippery conditions. Let the cart flow out wide whilst also moving to the left hand side. Brake aggressively to throw the cart onto the inside curb. 
This is all to make the next few corners a straight line, which ends with a lot of curb in this right hander, to open up the hairpin and get the best possible launch towards the final corner. The right hand kink is easily flat, but make sure not to break too late for the final hairpin. Get the car rotated as quickly as possible so that you can get on the power early. Let the 17 brake horsepower of the Tillotson T4 engine carry you to top speed and do it all over again here in Emmen. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I was struggling in this session. I had only driven a T4 in the wet once and that was over a year ago, so I had some trouble with finding the correct braking points and lines and I was quite a bit off the pace, a few tenths at least. It was clear that we had some homework to do. Alright, that was the first session. Uh, took a bit of getting used to. Also, uh, yeah, we had new tires and the Maxxis tires are a bit slippery in the first few laps. But after that I think it went re decently well. Uh, I need to find my brake points, that was a big struggle point for me. I spun almost a few times, so not good. Also, I um, immediately did a setup change. I felt like it was way too wide at the front, so I uh, narrowed it down a little bit. Um, it's now on one and a half rings, so that's a little bit less wide. Anyway, it should be a lot better now. Most of the time it's found in the driving anyway, so... And now we are heading to the mandatory photo shoot for the organizers, because I don't know why they want that, but they do. So, yay! Right, ready? Now it's uh, Wieske's turn. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's focus on the next session. There's definitely more time to be found, so let's work some more. Yeah, we definitely need to refine our driving a little bit more. I felt like I was a little bit all over the place. Uh, a little bit of getting used to the track as well. Um, luckily, it's not that hard to fix that. I need to do more laps and then uh, I hope it will all be good. I hope. It's uh, hailing quite hard, as you can see. It does mean that we have to go out on wet tires again. And these things hurt, so I'm going inside again. Then for the next session, I started improving. What really worked for me was not pushing as hard. I have a filthy habit of over pushing and the best antidote for that is to drive at 90% of your maximum. It worked and I started picking up some speed. We start reeling in the 348 and the 321 at a rapid pace. The 348 makes life easy for us by setting up the overtake and all we have to do is just follow him through. It was clear that we had better pace than in session 1, and we were especially strong in this hairpin, which we also used to make our move. Even though the sun was shining, the track was still slick as oil. Speaking of oil, have you ever had trouble refilling your T4's engine oil? Due to the placement of the oil cap, refilling can be difficult. Luckily, with this oil funnel tool, you can easily refill your engine oil without taking off the engine. You simply screw it in place and pour in the 500 milliliters of oil. You can order it now at benedurracing.com and never have trouble refilling your oil ever again. And with that slicky smooth ad out of the way, we slide right into the next session. As you can see, the weather took a turn for the worse and the skies are now overcast. More hail and rain fell, which made the track more slippery than it already was. I wanted to improve more and a perfect way to do that is to go out behind a fast driver. And this is where I first learned the perk of having a super experienced girlfriend. Wieske and I went out together with her taking the lead for now. We can immediately see that our lines through the final corner are very different, with my line being clearly slower. We gain a lot back in turns 1 and 2, where Wietzke leaves some time on the table. Then a few laps later, it is clearly visible that exiting turn 5 is a weak spot for us, where Wietzke pulls away by about a card length. In the next session we take some very different lines, which don't seem to make a big difference in time. In this hairpin however, I break much later than her. So much so that it holds us up and it messes up our exit. We drastically improved our final corner and we can now go for the overtake. Our engines are very equally matched, but because I have the inside, I can make the move stick. Now Witske can use me as a benchmark to see where she is gaining and losing time. We encounter another group of cards and it's once again clear that we are very strong into the middle sector happen. We overtake two cards and nearly T-bone the 348, just because we can break so late into that corner. Just to give you an idea on how strong we are with overtaking here, check this out.
I feel like we improved a lot. Witsuke and I gained some valuable knowledge and we both became faster. That just goes to show how useful teammates can be. Alright guys, um, yeah finally we managed to improve it, uh, at least a little bit. Um, yeah, I just had more free track this time. I yeah, got the feeling a lot better with the cards, which is nice. So yeah, we're down to a 51-1 now, which is I think quite competitive. We just need to uh, uh, be a little bit more consistent because uh, the lap times were all, all over the place after that. And also I have a cleaning job to do. One of the lines that I'm taking through the corners means that my car gets like insanely dirty. Yeah, that's not normal. First, let's clean this thing and then we have uh, scrutineering. All right, the car is clean now, as you can see, put some water on it. WD-40, super cleaner, boom, ready? I'm almost also ready for the technical scrutineering. We have our race engine here. Yeah, I just don't trust this one. I think it's a little bit too slow. Not too sure about it, but um, just to be safe. I know the other one's good, so I'm just going to be using that one. And uh, yeah, let's uh, finish the day. Two more sessions, let's go. Between last session and now it had actually stopped raining. Also the sun decided to show up. This meant that the track was drying really quickly, which is clearly visible by the dry line which formed very quickly. Usually in the wet you run high pressures and lower them as the track gets drier. I severely underestimated the sun however and when going out on track it was pretty much time for slicks. This meant that tires were pretty much burning alive and I felt it. We had no grip whatsoever. Wietzke's mechanic gambled much lower on tire pressures and it was still too high. We coincidentally pull into the pits at exactly the same time to drop the tire pressures. This was much better and we now set the fastest lap of the session by a quite big margin of 3 tenths. Even though you might think that this session was useless because we only just burned our tires, it's actually quite the contrary. If the track were to dry this fast in a race, we now knew what to do with our tire pressure. The rain stayed away for the rest of the day and we were now able to go out on slicks. The track was not 100% dry yet and the sun was going under, which made the track very slippery. If you guys know anything about me however, you will know that I absolutely love these conditions and that usually we are quite fast. And this session was no exception. In the end we set the best time of the session once again together with Wietzke. So far things are looking really equal between the two of us and it was looking like a 1-2 might be a possibility for tomorrow. Not a bad way to end the day in my opinion. Alright guys, fast forwarding a little bit, it's now dark, uh, this thing is clean, it took really long to uh, do all the tires because these Maxxis tires are freaking impossible to change. But hey, last session went pretty well, um, looks like Wietzke and me are yeah, the fastest of the field, I think at least, so it should be interesting tomorrow in qualifying. We set exactly the same lap time uh, in the last session, so it should be tight. Anyways, fast engines going on uh, tomorrow, I still feel like the engine that we run today isn't really doing it. So yeah, I hope that makes a little bit of a difference as well. Now we're going to have some food with the team and then uh, catch some very deserved sleep because I'm very tired. Yes! Alright, 33,000 of you. Enjoy the food. Yeah. You heard the man. Cheers. Love fun. Yeah. Alright guys, good morning. It is Sunday, race day. It's also very early because we're starting quite early. We have a driver's briefing, we need to do some work on the cart. Nice. The evening was good. I think you could tell that by the uh, footage. Anyways, time to get serious again. Let's go to the track. All right, people, welcome back to Pottendijk Emmen. It is raining very hard, so we will probably have a full wet day today. 
my cart's currently being built up as we now have the driver's briefing. So unfortunately I cannot work on the cart. But yeah, of course, being present at the briefing is mandatory, even though they are not going to tell me anything interesting, but it's still mandatory. All right, guys, warm up done. Um, yeah, we rub it in our new tires because um, new tires are actually slower with these wets. So we'll have a little bit of an advantage compared to the guys who didn't run in their new tires yet. And uh, with that, we said, that I think the fifth or sixth time, yeah, I felt like the tire pressures were a little bit too low because I was just sliding all over the place, uh, especially on traction, which was not good. But uh, hey, it's only the warm up. Uh, the qualifying will be up next, and that's what really matters. So I'll have the camera in the helmet for quali, and uh, I'll see you guys then because this thing is done. Yeah, just wait now. See you guys then. So, time for qualifying. And do you guys remember the semi-dry session from yesterday? Well, I did too. Low tire pressure worked an absolute treat in that specific session. And for quali, the track was also drying up really quickly. And I thought I could pull off the same trick as yesterday. Unfortunately, this time I severely overestimated how quickly the track would be drying. I was out on a tire pressure of one bar, while the rest of the field was running about 0.8 bars higher, which is a massive difference. It was only a matter of time to find out who gambled right, it was not me. It was like driving on ice. No grip and I really had to push the car to get some sort of temperature into the tires. We improved lap by lap as the tires started to finally wake up and do something. It took too long however and qualifying was over before we had optimal grip. That resulted in a disappointing P7. We had a job to do. Alright guys, um, yeah, wrong gamble. As soon as I saw that sun and I saw the track drying, I was like, yeah, I need to gamble on low uh, tire pressure now. Fortunately, it was too low. Um, yeah, it should have been like 1.5, 1.6, but yeah, I gambled for 0.9 and 0.8, so not good. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do now for the uh, race. Also, a thing, um, I uh, lost to my uh, girlfriend in the qualifying. She is one position ahead of me, but she does have something nice to show you guys. A brand new helmet. Right, look, look at that thing. It's Pretty similar to our old one, just a bit more aggressive, a bit more gold. I uh, I like it. Do you like it? Yes. Yes. Do you also like that you are one position in front of me? Yes. I think it's time for slicks. Alrighty guys, after a wait of almost half a year, Finally time to go racing again for the first time in 2024. We roll onto the tram lines, wait for the Dutch flag to drop, and it's go, go, go for the first race of the year. Tillotson T4 Series Netherlands. Let's go, starting in P7, already up to P4 now, going around the outside of two people. The guy on the inside is still there, but we hold it around the outside, then we will have the inside for the next corner, but unfortunately he just gets in front of us a little bit there. Going too wide into the next corner, see if we can follow them through, nothing yet. Here we do a sneaky one up the inside, but because we take a narrow line into that corner, we get a messed up exit and he is able to hold it around the outside, so we have to slot him behind for now. But maybe we can do a big dive on into the next corner, we don't know yet, we're in P5 now. Take that curb on the left hand side, on the right hand side, then take the curb on the left hand side. You can see that the 386 went for an overtake there, we, near, we are now behind the 389, but you can also see that he pulls away a lot on the exit there. And that is something that I started to notice as well when I was out on track. Here again we exit the final corner and he just pulls away an absolute treat there. He had a mega good exit or we just had a bad exit. I really wasn't sure what was going on there yet. But I did notice that in terms of exits we were losing a little bit going on to lap 2 now. A little bit of understeer, a little bit of oversteer. In these conditions it's super tricky to just get the card around the corner. As we can now also mount a little bit of an attack there on the 3... Uh, 89 but he is just a little bit too strong on exit here we do a little bit of a switchback we try to go up the inside again but again he just has too much acceleration for us and because we are compromised coming out of the corner now Witzka also goes up our inside we are now uh, demoted back to P6 while she goes up to P5 we are following her right really close into this hairpin but we accident accidentally overtake it that was not what I meant to do and here I signal to her come on follow me give me a little bit of a push try to get to the 389 but unfortunately we are just a little bit too slow and here on exit 
again we are just not accelerating out of the corner as hard as we should be and Witske can pull alongside her on the straight and we have absolutely nothing to fight with she just powers past me without slipstream so definitely something was definitely not right here and I felt like we had an issue and it only started becoming worse because over the next few laps something happened the engine stopped working completely and we were now a lot too slow look at how much he's pulling away there I tried to get the car to accelerate but it just wasn't accelerating I wasn't sure what it was was it set up was it something to do with the engine was it a problem I have no idea but what I did know is that we were way too slow by this point so now we had to really dig deep and see if we can gain some more time in the corners here I'm just trying to get that car to accelerate but it just wasn't doing it we go green by five tenths but it's no use because we're still too slow we have a little bit of a look behind us there to see if there are people behind us but you can just see that we are too slow on the straight people can overtake us left right and center here another one follows him through that's the thing with Tillotson if one of the guys comes then one will follow another will follow another will follow that's the thing with close racing like this and then we are a little bit down on power whilst yeah Everyone has more or less the same engine power and you don't. Big problem. Here you can see them again. They pull away so much on the exit. There we get a little bit of a shunt from behind because they can really uh, yeah, carry a lot more speed through there than me. And I get a big push. Here I start defending towards the inside. But we have someone on the left hand side and on the right hand side. But they are just overtaking us on the straight. But we decide to hold it around the outside here. We just keep that position by having big balls. Which is uh, something you also need of course. But you also need a quick engine which is something that we didn't really have uh, right now then uh, skipping ahead to the end of lap 8 we get a little bit of a push the uh, 348 goes up the inside here and here you can really see that we're starting uh, to have a big problem even though that we are in the slipstream he's still pulling away by multiple car lengths as we are now also getting overtaken by the 311 things are not looking good here guys I felt that when I was out on track I was getting frustrated as well here I go uh, for a little bit of a cheeky move back up the inside of the 311 but he keeps it on the inside we do a beautiful switchback move which allows us to keep the position here but yeah on the straight we're just a sitting duck in the corner we can fight back you can see that we are even gaining a little bit back on the 348 but you can also see how hard the 311 can hit us from behind our head going backwards there almost giving us a whiplash here the 311 goes again and yeah I tried to pull alongside but there's pretty much nothing we can do especially on top speed just look at how much he's pulling away we can't do anything he pulled like a car length just on top speed now skipping ahead to uh, lap 11 I hope we can um, do a little bit more at least the guys started pulling ahead uh, or the guys who were ahead of us started pulling away you can just see how much they pull away on the straight but here in the corners we're back in the fight so let's see if we can do something here they are all squabbling we throw it up the inside of the 348 here very aggressively we scare him out of the way and that's p9 back uh, for us but then when the straight comes we just can't do anything here i know that my exit would be terrible so i start defending immediately but he can just overtake us around the outside and there's another one pushing him along as well we just can't do anything uh, the only thing i can do is keep the inside and just have big balls keep p10 for now but yeah it's it's an, it's, an, it's an uphill battle. If you guys ever had an engine issue during a race, you know it's an uphill battle. You, you can just drive your, your, your heart out, but if the car's not accelerating when you put that foot down, nothing much you can do. And I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's an engine problem, if it was something to do with our setup. But at this point, we were two seconds off the pace, while we were only about four tenths of the pace in qualifying. So there, it definitely seemed that, that we had some sort of issue with the cars here on exit again. We, we pretty much get an equal exit, but then once we get a little bit more uh, up to speed, he just pulls away a lot. Going through the final corner now, final lap. Uh, yeah, just look at that, guys. No words, really. And to make matters worse, we get overtaken here again on the straight. And that makes for a very disappointing P11 finish, which is not good. And judging by our times there, we are in P9. You can really see that we were too slow. We were uh, over the pace by about, yeah, more than a second. But uh, in terms of consistency, we were even more of the pace. So let's hope that race two will be better. Well, guys, that was absolutely bloody terrible. Yeah, from the beginning of the race, we pretty much had no power. And then it, it only started... Yeah, becoming worse. I was eventually like lapping almost two seconds a lap of the pace, which is not good. So now, yeah, we uh, changed to our other engine. I hope it works. This has been slower, uh, yeah, over the past than the other one. But yeah, the other one ha just had a problem. I don't know what. Um, so yeah, I hope this one works now. Anyways, can't do more than my best. So let's try. I hope we don't lose too many positions. I hope. Let's try. Alright guys, as you can see, or actually as you cannot see, welcome to race 2. 
The rain intensified a whole lot and visibility was absolutely horrible. There was absolutely no way to see what was going on ahead of us. So some people wouldn't even go out to practice in these conditions like this, but we decided to have a race here. Anyways, we pull onto the tram lines now. The flag drops and away we go for race two of the first round of the Dutch Tillerson T4 series. We can see absolutely nothing. Could you imagine racing in this? Well, we did it, but I couldn't see anything at all. We go to the left hand side here, but then the guy on the right hand side decides to have a little bit of a spin. We get caught up in it, bent our chassis, lose a lot of positions. I didn't even know what position we were in. I was hitting the wheel in frustration there. I lost so many positions and I, to be honest, can't really tell what position we are in because I basically just see nothing. Here we give our advisor a little bit of a wipe. Let's see if we can get back into this race. Of course, frustrating start, but let's see if we can get some positions back. I knew that in these conditions we are fast and we go up the inside here immediately of the 348 so that's one position back, gain another position back because yeah, there was a guy uh, slow on the exit. We go up the inside of the other guy here on the left hand side as well, try to go into the inside here in the final corner, we are definitely a lot faster than the guys around us now. But that's because we are at the back of the field of course so let's see how much more forward we can go. You can also see that our other engine definitely has a little bit more pull compared to the slower guys and we enter lap 2 in P16 which is... Uh, already a big improvement because I think we were down in like P24. Here the guy has a little bit of a look back up the inside but we hold it around the outside, have the inside for the next corner. Let's charge through this field. I know I'm much quicker than what is around me. Let's see how many positions we can make up. Get a good exit here. Still we are losing a little bit of time here on the exit. We go for an absolutely massive dive from here into this right hander which is almost fed in the drive but you, you just basically can't see anything in these conditions. And we just send it up the inside, job done. Here we again send it up the inside, going into this hairpin, which has been uh, historically strong for us. We didn't quite make it work this time, however, but we get a rocket ship exit compared to the other guy. Throw it up the inside here, and that's P14, done and dusted for us. I don't know, man, but whenever I'm angry, I just have so much more concentration. Also, the fact that the engine was a little bit faster definitely helped. We overtake someone on the straight here, which is something we haven't been able to do for this entire weekend. We're already up into P13, so... We're basically almost back into our previous position. We throw it up the inside again here into turn one. So we are now up into P12. But unfortunately, he overtakes us back. We cannot really do the switch back. He pulls away a little bit. That's the thing in Tillotson. If you mess up your overtake and he overtakes you back, you have no exit. But we have a little bit of a peek up the inside. There's actually someone launches it around the outside there. Um, yeah, the 336 card, uh, you can't really see his number, but he was very quick. As we now also pull alongside the other one, have the inside into the right-hander, take a little bit of a job from the curb, but um, as I was saying, the 336 was very quick, but he makes a little bit of a mistake. He goes back off the circuit, and now we also take his place back. So we're now in P12, and uh, we're just absolutely shooting up the field. We already gained the most positions uh, that we lost in that start crash. We already gained them back. Here we're pulling up alongside. We you can just see how equal these engines are sometimes. Uh, we just just about managed to keep the inside there. He was a little bit faster than us on the straight, but we just kept our foot in it. Dive into turn one on the inside, and boom, job done. He tries to have a little bit of a look back at us, but we hold it around the outside, and that's job done. The camera cut away there, but we uh, managed to keep it around the outside. Next target, our teammate, Luke. Unfortunately, um, some uh, unfortunate incident happened uh, between the two of us. Um, I tried to go up the inside here into this uh, hairpin, which is strong for us. Unfortunately, he took a little bit of a tight line than I anticipated, and I accidentally uh, yeah, tapped him, and he did a half spin, which lost him a bunch of positions. My bad, didn't do it on purpose, got an official warning for that, uh, which is uh, nothing more than justified in my opinion. But we're absolutely charging through the field. We actually also set the fastest lap uh, for one lap, but. Uh, Unfortunately, that got taken away from us. And remember, we're doing all of this with a bent cart and a subpar engine. Now skipping ahead to lap 8, we are in P9. We gained uh, another position because there were actually people retiring from the race because they thought it was too wet here. Here you can see that the guy ahead of us has a little bit of an off there on the right. We just pull alongside, going around the outside of the flatter right-hander, and we just make it stick around the outside. If that's not a good overtake, I don't know what is. So we're now in P8, on lap 8. Let's see if we can go a little bit forward. We are absolutely flying through the field. Our lap times were really, 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 really good. And remember guys, we are nursing damage and an engine with problems. So I feel like the pace was definitely good. Unfortunately, um, the race was just a little bit too short for us to overtake some more people. You can see that we caught up to the next group of cards and that was the top eight. It was right there in front of us. And in these conditions, man, 
I'm 100% sure that we are one of the strongest drivers of the field. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of bad luck uh, in that start, and we also had to nurse some damage. Um, but look at our lap times there. Uh, we set the second fastest lap time uh, of the race. Only P1 was faster than us. Uh, we definitely should have been up there. We just got very unlucky with that crash, also nursing damage. So who knows what could have been if we didn't have that damage. Uh, but hey, motorsports full of what-ifs. Um, I felt like we maximized uh, that race. And um, yeah, unfortunate, but heads up. Still one more race to go. Let's see what we can make of that. Well, um, as if it could get any worse. Yeah, no words really. Um, guys at the start, couldn't go anywhere. Card bent. It's, uh, Ready to go on the straight link table now because it's uh, pretty fucked. Managed to yeah char charge through the field, gain a few positions, but I, yeah, I just couldn't do much more than this. Um, yeah, so now we're going to see if it's uh, if it's actually bent or not, or if maybe just some of the parts, and then uh, how we can fix it, and uh, yeah, we'll just see for uh, the third race. Anyway, pace was a lot better this time though. Engine kept working, even though it's still a little bit too slow. It kept working, so that's nice. And um, yeah, hope we can fix it. Yeah, so now we're checking both heights uh, of the uh, front. Um, I hope it's not gone too much this time. It's almost perfect now. So now it's time to check the alignment. They do that using these two uh, metal things. And yeah, by that way we can see if it's uh, good or not. Alright guys, time for the final race of the day. Another race of 10 minutes. We haven't really been lucky in the previous two races. Engine problems in the first one, crash in the second one, and again engine problems. So let's see what we can make of it. We roll into the tram lines now, the flag drops, and away we go. We're starting at B8 this time. We have our girlfriend Bitske right there in front of us, who's having a uh, brilliant weekend actually. We go around the outside, gain one place, gain two places, nearly gain three. Uh, one of the guys keeps it up the inside there, and we are now up to B5 by just barging our way through. And guys, again, I felt that we had engine problems. Just look at how much the other drivers pulled away from us here on exit. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, to be honest though, it wasn't all the engine. Um, because uh, I had a little bit of problems, I also started over pushing, which also cost me a, uh, at least a few tens. But we also definitely had some mechanical issues. Here in the corners we kind of catch back up, but on exit B again have uh, nothing to fight with. So I'm really happy with that P5. Maybe if we really, really concentrate and if we get lucky, we can get some more positions because luck is also just a big factor in motorsport. Everything needs to be right. Your card needs to be right, the driving needs to be right, your setup needs to be right, but you also need to have luck. So maybe snoop some sort of position away. Here you can see in the corners that we are just rapid. We catch back up to uh, our girlfriend here immediately, but then on the exit, bye bye. They just pull away, we can't do anything, which is um, kind of frustrating. Like I said, up uh, uphill battle. Let me know in the comments if you ever had a uh, uh, race like this but for now we are on p5 so let's not get ahead of ourselves let's focus on trying to keep that p5 maybe mount an attack uh, if the guys in front of us make a mistake and yeah at least it's better than the last race right we survived the start we didn't crash uh, cutting uh, to lap three now uh, unfortunately my uh, helmet cam decided to uh, stop recording uh, right about now so i actually don't have any of that other race uh, on the camera um, but yeah, we stayed in P5, um, even though we were way too slow. Just look at our lap times. Uh, yeah, we were about half a second of the pace, uh, which is about what I felt like we missed in engine power. Maybe a little bit less, because the driving also was a little bit all over the place in that last uh, race. But um, yeah, not good. Uh, not good for the championship. Championship's not over though, but this definitely is not a good start. If we still want the shot at the ticket and at the title, we need to pick up our pace. We need to find out where this problem came from get a little bit of luck on our side and then maybe we can rejoin that fight. But for now we have to settle with a P7 overall. And considering the bad luck that we had this race, I think that's alright. Well guys, what a weekend. This is Red Actions from the Future, I'm recording this actually during editing, so a few weeks in the future. But um, yeah, terrible luck, I also had a problem uh, with the speed. Um, we cracked open both engines and uh, both had some problems, uh, mainly to do with uh, some mistakes that were made during uh, the last service they got. Also the fact that we didn't have a mechanic didn't really help because we didn't really have time to check those sort of things. Because if we found them during the weekend we could have solved it right then and there and then we could have had no problems. But uh, hey, it's over now, I, I definitely learned from it, uh, I won't be doing a race without a mechanic again. 
So for the next race in Kevin, we'll be back with a fast engine and with a mechanic. So let's see what we can do with that. Anyways guys, with that also comes the end to this video. If you enjoyed that, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You know, you really help me when you do that. It really helps me when you subscribe. You won't miss any new videos, so it's a win-win situation. Now, if you're curious about the Tillotson T4 cars, I actually did a review on it about a year ago. It's an older video. It's on screen right here, so definitely check that out. This video, however, is done, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.